Dr. Guy E. Glad is a certified alcohol and drug abuse counsellor, addiction medicine therapist, licensed marriage and family therapist, and ordained minister who's on the line with us here just now. How are you today? I'm excellent, Toby. Thank you. With all that stuff that you do, is it ever confusing with all those different roles? (laughs) Uh, Well, that's a great question. It's not confusing, but you need a broad spectrum of expertise to to be any kind of effect positively in people's lives who have special needs. Can you just tell us a little bit about your experience as an army chaplain and addiction medicine therapist, and how did your background kind of contribute to your work? Well, I'm an adult child of an alcoholic. I came from a Marine Corps home where my father was an alcoholic. He was an abusive alcoholic. And needless to say, I grew up seeing nothing but destructive consequences of alcohol abuse. Uh, And then transitioned to my time in the Army as an Army chaplain. I spent 30 years as an Army chaplain doing a lot of counseling for my soldiers And I noticed the same pattern repeating itself, destructive consequences of alcohol abuse on careers, relationships, physical health, and mental health. And then when I retired from the Army, I went back to work for the Army as a civilian therapist in an Army teaching hospital specializing in addiction medicine and behavioral health. And man, the pattern just continued. It's a common pattern, regardless of whether you're in uh, your civilian or in the military military, regardless of what country you're in, alcohol abuse fingerprints are very clear over people's lives. And what are some of the biggest challenges you've encountered when helping individuals struggling with addiction? I think probably the biggest initial challenge is denial. Um, the, The first step on the road back to recovery from addiction is to be able to be humble enough to admit that I have lost control of my life. And that's often very hard for folks, especially military, who's been trained to be independent and not let anything bother them. So I I think initially, denial is probably the biggest challenge. You've actually written a book called Ambushed, the siren song of alcohol use. So to what extent did your experience working with people with addictions inspire the book? What inspired the book was my my witnessing the continual, repeated pattern, uh, again, regarding regardless of whether someone's a soldier or a civilian, if they're from America or from Europe, it didn't really matter. The pattern was always the same. And I felt a need, Toby, to uh, do something to engage the problem with the culture. And so it's kind of a constellation of motivators. My family of origin experience with an alcoholic abusive father, my 30 years in the military witnessing soldiers uh, losing their careers, losing their families, losing their health. And then as seven years as an addiction uh, therapist, addiction medicine therapist at an army teaching hospital, seeing the same thing going on. And so I was really inspired and motivated to, to wrap all that up and to write something that is going to contribute significantly to solving the problem. And do you think you have a maybe unique perspective on this issue? I think I, uh, I, I'm not sure if my perspective is, is unique as much as it is broad. It's broad and wide. And I've seen it in every situation. I've, I've witnessed enough of addiction medicine therapy um, and all the speed bumps and and challenges that come with it to know that the enemy is a common enemy regardless of gender, race, nationality, continent. It doesn't really matter. The, The siren song of alcohol use is a danger for all of us. Are there any practical tips that you offer in the book for individuals who maybe want to break that alcohol habit? I would say the first thing is the need for uh, a support group just to make a person accountable. So accountability goes along with that, what I mentioned earlier about being humble enough to admit I've lost control of my life. Uh, yeah. One of the biggest uh, dynamics of addiction is secret keeping. People like to keep it a secret. They like to hide it from everyone else. They will lie. They will deceive. They will uh, manipulate. They'll do everything they can to to hide their addiction. And so the first step in in breaking that 
that is to admit I have a problem. The second step is to immediately and willingly make myself accountable to another person or a group. And that's one of the strong points of groups like Alcoholics Anonymous or Celebrate Recovery or Narcotics Anonymous is I'm accountable for my actions and my decisions to people other than just me. Yeah, that's one of the important parts of it really, isn't it? The 12 steps, because you realise that it's not just you that it's harming and you get the opportunity to fix some relationships that may have been broken in that recovery period. Yeah, absolutely. And and the 12 steps are very powerful. But like I told my group members multiple times repeatedly, is that uh, I created kind of a pre-step one. And my soldiers, mostly veteran retirees who are having problems with alcohol abuse, they look at me, what do you what do you mean, Dr. Glad? What do you mean pre-step one? And that's where I bring in the idea of humbling myself first before I enter into the 12 steps because you got to be humble to to even enter into step one. And over the years, how have you seen alcohol addiction change? I mean, is it at the same levels it always was? Has it increased or decreased? It's on the increase slightly. The the immediate statistics on it indicate that approximately 10% of the population at any given time is having challenges with alcohol abuse but but statistics are only as good as what's being reported. Yeah. And as I said earlier, one of the biggest dynamics of addiction is secret keeping, not telling anybody else about it. And so the the statistics we see, you know, approximately 10% of the population is struggling with addiction is probably only half the story. I think it's probably closer to 20%. Yeah. And um and, and so over the years it's slowly increased, but I think another uh component, powerful component is the acceptability in Western civilization of alcohol use. It's become a part of the culture and and it's almost expected anywhere you go, almost anywhere to an adult uh, venue of whatever kind, you can pretty much guarantee there's going to be alcohol there. and, and, And it's become almost a running joke in Western culture about alcohol use and, and even in some instances, a joke about abusing alcohol. So I think, I think the culture change, has shifted also. And it's interesting because those statistics most of the time will probably be gathered from surveys and people will lie out of embarrassment or maybe not even realise that they are struggling with alcohol, won't they? So of course you're only getting half the story, as you say. Yeah, and you asked earlier what's the most practical um, elements of my book. One of the points I make in the book is There's a real easy way to discover if I have an alcohol use problem, and that is, am I able to take one drink and stop? Mm. A person who has a dependency problem or an alcohol abuse problem will have a hard time answering that question with a yes. Most of the time, once someone who has an addiction to alcohol begins drinking, they can't stop until they pass out. And can that be applied to other things? Because, I mean, I could say that about chocolate. (laughs) Well, absolutely. You know what happens if you eat too much chocolate? Uh, You got to go out and buy new pants because your old pants no longer fit. (laughs) Yes. They start the day as white and they don't end the day. (laughs) Are you working on any other books at the moment? Maybe a similar theme or something completely different? Well, I've got a second and a third book that's already out there published that are kind of an extension of my first one. Um, When I got done with Ambushed, The Siren Song of Alcohol Use, my first book, um, I I became motivated by to write another book because the common problem underlying alcohol abuse is an inability on the part of the person to identify and manage their negative emotions. So many people drink because they had a bad day at work, they have a terrible boss, they had a fight with their spouse, they're having major financial problems. So what's the easiest thing to do instead of solving the problem? Uh, drink it away and I won't have to think about it until the next day again. Yeah. And so my second book is entitled Personal Peace, Embrace the Promises, and it deals with anxiety management. How do I recognize, identify my negative emotions, and how do I manage them apart from abusing alcohol? That was my second book. My third book that's out there is called Resilient Faith of Biblical Proportions, 
And it deals with the general idea that the more stable and secure my faith in God is, the better I'll be able to stand the pressures uh, of, of my daily life, the easier I'll be able to process my negative emotions, and the better decisions I'll have regarding my alcohol use. And I noticed from the cover, actually, of the Resilient Faith, you have a lot of titles to your name. You're a doctor, you got a PhD, DSL. When you write a letter to you, it must be hard to remember all those letters. <laughs> if you want to write a letter to me, Toby, <laughs> just say, Dear Guy Glad, it'll get to me. <laughs> so I take it. You don't mind if people forget the old stuff. I, I don't mind. As a matter of fact, sometimes I prefer it. Yeah. Well, this book, the one about alcohol, is of course called Ambushed, the siren song of alcohol use. And it's actually quite cheap on Amazon here. Kindle edition, £5.10. Where are we able to find it? Obviously, I mentioned Amazon. Is that the only place or are there others? So you can buy it directly from Amazon uh, or you can go on my website and order it directly from me a little bit cheaper. And where can we get it from you? Do you have a website of some kind? I, I do. My website is really simple. www.guyglad.com Wow. Congratulations on securing that domain because that's a nice and easy one. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, many thanks for talking to us today and have a great day. Thank you, Toby. It was a great, great talking to you. Blessings.